Hello crafters, this is Yana Smokula. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is all about ink blending as a way to color stamped images. I have three cards to share, all colored using inks and stencils. At the beginning of this year, Pretty Pink Posh came out with a clever new product, stencils that match previously released stamp sets. To me, that is simply genius as that allows to easily add color to a stamped image using ink blending without any coloring. You don't have to know how to color, you can just blend the ink instead. Here's a look at one of the new matching stencils. This is Hibiscus Flower and it is a two set stencil. And it is a layering one. It has three layers for each flower. The stencil coordinates perfectly with the stamps in the hibiscus stamp set and the hibiscus coordinating dies. And these were released last summer, if I'm not mistaken. So you have three products that work perfectly well together. A stamp to stamp the image outline, a die to cut the shape out, and then a stencil to color that shape. Of course, each of these can be used on its own separately. You can use just the stencil to ink blend the shape or you can use just the stamp to stamp the image outline and then perhaps color it using your favorite coloring medium. Now, if you plan to use the stencil in conjunction with the stamp set and the die set, it is important to use the correct side of the stencil. Here is a, a panel I ink blended where I used the incorrect side of the stencil and thus I wasn't able to stamp the image outline on top as the ink blended image was mirrored. To compare, here is another panel where I ink blended the leaves using the correct side of the stencil and was able to stamp the image outline over them. To identify the correct side of the stencil, you can look for the etching. The brand and the stencil name is etched on the stencil. So the etching will tell you that this is the correct side of your stencil. If you plan to use it with the stamps and dies, make sure you use the correct side. If you don't plan to use the matching stamps and dies, it doesn't really matter which side of the stencil you use. You can actually even use both. I've grown to really love these stencils as they allow me to easily create colorful images and even backgrounds. I love monstera leaves. We had a very big monstera plant when I was growing up and living with my mom. So I wanted to ink blend a monstera leaf background for this card and this stencil made it super easy. There are three leaves in this stencil. There's a large and a small monstera leaf and also a palm leaf. I ink blended all three to create my background. My ink blending was done using Distress Oxide inks. I have Twisted Citron, Mold Lawn, Rustic Wilderness, and Forest Moss. I did very simple ink blending and I combined several colors of ink to add color variation to the leaves. I also did the ink blending first and then stamped the black outline but you can go in reverse order if you want. So you can stamp the outline first and ink blend later. It just all depends on what kinds of ink you're using. I prefer to do the ink blending first for several reasons. Mostly, I don't like to blend over the black outline with oxide inks as they dull the darkness a little bit. And the second reason, I prefer to stamp the outlines with Versafine Onyx Black ink, and this particular type of ink needs a few minutes to dry. Since I am a very impatient person, there is always risk of smearing the ink when blending over it, so I simply ink blend first and then stamp later. I tried to make this background somewhat random by ink blending the leaves facing in different directions, using various shades of green, and grouping the leaves in different ways. With the ink blending done, I used my Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamped the black outlines over the ink blended leaves. I intended to offset the stamping a little bit, and this way I had a little bit of the white on each leaf, and that worked a lot like a highlight, and I, I very much like the offset look. It's very different if you try to match up the ink blending with the stamping. You certainly can, but I feel it looks better when the layers are offset. 
As I do the stamping, you can instantly begin to see the pattern change and transform, and it actually looks like a pre-printed piece. Very cool. Had I assumed the image outlines in black and used a coloring medium, such as alcohol markers, for example, this background would have taken me a very long time to finish. I love the simplicity with which I'm able to add color to these leaves using that stencil. Don't get me wrong, I do love to color, I love my alcohol markers, and I love to spend time coloring, detail coloring an image, but sometimes using a stencil to quickly add color to something is just the best. Once I finished stamping this pattern, I trimmed it to three and three quarter inches by five inches and foam mounted it onto an A2 white side folding card base. To create a sentiment for this card and all of the cards I share in this video, I used two stamp sets from Pretty Pink Posh. The Butterfly Friends set, I heat embossed the word friend from here, and I embossed it in white on black cardstock and cut it out using a coordinating die. And then I paired it with the sentiments from the Simple Sentiments set also from Pretty Pink Posh, and you can see how well it works with nearly all of the messages in this stamp set. Here's a look at this card once finished. It is super simple, but very colorful, all thanks to that fabulous ink blended background. Next, I ink blended several additional leaves onto white cardstock. I ink blended them all separately as I was planning to cut them out using the coordinating dies. I used the exact same colors of ink to blend the leaves. I similarly blended the flowers, but then I used a much lighter hand to apply much less ink to these images. I once again went with Distress Oxide inks and I used Spun Sugar, Kitsch Flamingo, and Picked Raspberry, as well as Squeeze Lemonade, Mustard Seed, and Wild Honey colors. I have found it is best to ink blend the second and the third flower layers after the image outlines have been stamped, as that helps to position these second and third layers correctly. Otherwise, I've discovered I've ink blended the layers completely incorrectly and actually messed up a couple of flowers. So here I stamped the outlines in black, I used the coordinating dies to cut them out, and now I can properly align the second layer and ink blend it as intended, making sure I'm not blending it in some odd place on the flower. The second layer is actually quite easy to align. So you align the main layer and then just slide the stencil over. And that is how you align that second layer. I did try to offset the blending of the second layer as well to continue that overall offset look. And then I also ink blended the third layer in the same way. And look at these, aren't they gorgeous? So easy to ink blend stunning florals for your cards with this stencil. I especially like that I can combine two colors on one flower using ink. There's no way I would have been able to color a flower like this using alcohol markers. So to me, using the stencil is super helpful. For my second card, I made a floral arrangement using the leaves and the flowers. I used a sheet of alabaster cardstock from Spellbinders for the background. I cut it to three and three quarter inches by five inches and foam mounted the images on top. This makes for such an easy card. I also added the sentiment, the same one I used for the first card. And with that done, I foam mounted the panel onto an A2 white side folding card base. Lastly, I embellished this card with sparkling clear sequins. I really love these to add a pop of sparkle to my projects. My last card for today features a dimensional stamped pattern using the same images. It actually suffered quite a transformation and I had to do some card surgery as I first created this pattern on a sheet of dark blue card stock, but I didn't quite like how it looked, so I cut it all apart and now you can see me re-gluing these images onto a very light background. It's the same alabaster cardstock. I feel like the light background works so much better here, especially when you look at the pink and the yellow flowers. Somehow they look better on a lighter background. 
I've created several floral clusters and positioned them around the edge of the panel, creating a dimensional floral pattern. My pattern goes outside the edge, creating the illusion that this piece was cut out from a much larger sheet. I also added a similar friend sentiment, and finally I embellished this card using the same sparkling clear sequence from Pretty Pink Posh. Here's how this card turned out. I love the bold and bright tropical pattern. So here's a look at the three cards I have for you today, created by using a stencil to color stamped images. I hope you enjoyed this video and will give this idea a try. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time.